There we go, now I've had level. So, hey, uh, welcome back to uh, Dreadnought Playlist Redux number two. Now that I've got a sort of name for it. Um, all right, so last video was really long because I just decided to take all the footage that I had collected and shove it into one thing, which I'm happy with how that turned out, even though it was a little long. Still waiting for feedback on that, so if you're not, well, hopefully you've... Uh, commented and everything and please continue to comment and all that fun stuff so that i can make you know ever better improving content and all that but outside of that i'm gonna go ahead and aim this uh aim this at my uh modeling area and go ahead and get started all right and here i am just uh, moving the little pieces of plastic here so as you can see, I'm just uh, looking at the plan, trying to measure where things go. I may or may not mark them out with uh, a mechanical pencil. And then I just go ahead and I fine trim little bits of this uh, strip until I get things that uh, either are the details I want or the uh, plastic strips to the length I uh, need. So in this case, I've actually gone and cut it up in a particular way to cut out a doorway in this small piece of plastic that way uh, trying to better replicate as i said those doors and throughways and whatnot that you actually see on a ship trying to better i guess better sell the illusion as some might put it that sounded a like a really smart way to put it so i'll put it that way but um and here is a what i'm sure is a lot of hemming and hawing about how do i do stairs how do i not do stairs that kind of thing so I refer to these plans a lot, and uh, I guess here I am cutting some pieces to it. Ah, okay, so here I am adding in a section of floor that I should not have removed previously. And um, it will stick, and I do end up using this piece, although it's not quite the same thickness as the rest. I guess if I really needed to, I suppose I could have uh, either... Oh, I don't know, used putty or something to fill things in. I may yet still, I may not. Or if I really wanted to keep that even, I could have gasped, done this whole section over. But again, this is more of a learning section to the ship. And again, since it's a model, there is the whole thing of how far do we need to go? But that's besides the point. Um, here I am cutting some sections down. Uh, I guess I used a piece of... Um, Huh. Just wondering why I'm making them all that length. Maybe it was just because I knew that something was a certain width. Um, oh, I get it. Okay, sorry. So, here, what I try doing is making stairs. And I try making them out of plastic rather than, um... Admittedly consorting with the dark arts and trying to do them out of photo etch um spoiler alert this doesn't work uh you'll see in a few moments but um yeah i'm trying to cut down thin thin pieces of plastic and lay them into this kind of uh skeleton i've got going for a uh, staircase in the hopes that i can make with little plastic pieces a reasonably good facsimile of a staircase and i keep trying and it just doesn't work. It's... Again, I made the sides. Then I use it, have one set of strip. And then I use another strip, which is this really thin one going... That I just grabbed. And I tried to do it that way with the staircase and everything else. But despite my best efforts, even with the new fancy Kirby tweezers and the uh, X-Acto blade, it just doesn't work. Yeah, it just didn't work. So, in about a moment or two, uh, the guy trying to uh, make this staircase out of plastic and time lapse is going to understand that uh, it's a futile effort. And then I'm just going to go to trying to do something else. So, there I am cutting a thing of the thin strip that I was using as steps, trying to fiddle it in there with the uh, nice fancy curvy tweezers. And then I realize I might as well give up while I'm ahead. So here I am cutting out some wall sections. That's why I'm using the uh, tweezers and the uh, snips. And the idea is there is a throughway there. And then I use a remaining set of strip and I cut it to the appropriate width to make wall sections here. 
Because, um, at least on the plan, I think this is where some of the fan chambers were for the last boiler room. And uh, then a staircase that led up to uh, from this level to the next one. I'm not even sure what they would call this level. But there I am trying to see how wide is this, how wide do I need to cut it, etc. And there I go. I did it as a rough measurement based on the uh, actual thing itself, which is quick and easy. Not, I know, not elegant. If I were elegant, I'd do micrometers, but that's besides the point. And here I am talking about the photo etch. Okay. All that time lapse with very little to show for it. With a lot more plastic fiddling. I was trying to make a staircase, and I might have mentioned it, you know, in my voiceover I do. And, well, it just wasn't happening. So, I've got two choices. One, give up on the staircase. Two, start trying to, my hand at practicing the dark arts again. Photo etching. Now, the good news is I have accumulated some learnings. But I've only got maybe enough photo resist to maybe one more shot. One, uno, single, one. Similar questions about the amount of brass I have. I, I am gonna be getting new etchant as well. I already got some to replace this. Because, well, I got it from the hardware store. I'm going to do that um, hydrogen peroxide muriatic acid thing you might see online in a couple places if you look around for it um, as, a, as a DIY etching solution. Hopefully it works good because that would be nice. And then I can just keep it in a you know dark container because that says to do that maybe. And hopefully that all works. Hopefully it doesn't eat my little air stone I have here for aerating it. But I'll cross that bridge when I come to it, I guess. But either way, that's, you know, yeah. Now I could, I could go order more of the photo resist and the mask making paper online, but the card keeps getting lost. It just decided to be the card that's never found. It just keeps getting lost and gone. Uh, we, we've, the wife and I have had a fun time trying to keep track of this small, important piece of plastic that's just... Well, um... I guess my biggest problem is I've been making these uh, masks inside out. <laughs> I, I have. Like, this is, like, so the ink side isn't supposed to be in the outside, which I did to try and protect it, you know, from the metal sliding in there and snuffing it up. And no, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to do it the other way. You know, ink goes on inside, not outside. So, which makes sense when you think about it, because it gets the ink as close as possible to the photoresist to prevent the fuzzy edge phenomenon I've been experiencing. Guess my problem is obvious to people in the know. But that's, uh, yeah, so that's got its own bits of fun, doesn't it? I guess this ink stays on reasonably good, so maybe it's not so bad, but still. <sighs> Alternatively, I could contract it out to a professional but I'm not made of money. Unless they start letting me sell my organs, which I don't think they're gonna do anytime soon. Although you only need one kitten. No, 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 no. You only need part of your li- No, no, I like my liver. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, that uh, card, we had a panic moment after I just uh, edited that section. So. Here's some uh, guys that I ended up creating um, for the photo etch. I just did it out of rectangles um, and then, you know, putting them together in this Inkscape program. There I go, copy in a few, and then I ungroup them. You can group it on group in it. Um, and then you can kind of uh, change the position using the numbers as you saw me do there. I figured I'd just do this little injection of the software I use in case y'all or interested this is called inkscape um i guess it's got either it's a free software license or it's a free open source software license there i am zooming in and here i am looking at i think this might actually be the uh 
Oh, this is actually the thing I created for the last thing I cre um, made of it. Just showing some pieces that I'd made before, uh, and then measuring. Because I did want to do a bit of measuring to make sure things were um, all good to go in that. So, as you can see, I've made these guys just a little bit shorter than the ones in that main fret. And I'm probably going to start doing a bit of editing there. Um, and the reason for all of that is that since I'm using shorter um, deck levels now in this set of, um, in this set of decks, because I went from like a 0.1 uh, double lot thick uh, or wide strips to 0.080, and that's inches by the way. Um, I have to kind of change. Yep, there I am deleting all the uh, things that are a bit too uh, thick. And I'm assuming that in a moment I'll start working on... Uh... Oh yeah, Octave is another useful program. That is free open source, FLSS. And uh, did a bit of math there just to say, how thick does this thing get? Kind of thing. So I'm trying to wonder why I did that uh, bit of math there. Again, I film these things and then I uh, do the commentary after, so there is that chance that I was thinking something and I don't remember what it is. And uh, this, I guess, is clearly one of those times. So, yeah, again, just for comedy's sake, so that uh, card that's always lost, that keeps getting lost and lost, my friends, well, um, yeah, I had a little panic moment uh, when I started editing this section, and yeah... Not knowing whether or not I handed it to my wife, I asked her if I handed it to her, and then we almost had a panic fit with me going out to the car, but thankfully she found it in her wallet. So, yeah, kudos to her. And here I am just kind of editing the size of these uh, pieces, as well as the positions. You can also flip these things over. That's another manipulation you can do in Inkscape, which is pretty useful. And if you know the uh, numbers to type in, or how th thick or thin your pieces are, you can actually do quite a bit. I'm sure it's a lot more powerful than I've been using it for. Uh, I'm trying to make reasonable facsimiles of uh, people at small scale. And, well, just spoiler alert, if you haven't looked towards uh, later in this video, it does work, and it works phenomenally well. Since I've kind of grouped it, now I just, you know, mess with it a little bit, mistype something, then I type it in right, and then... I actually can make a pattern of it in Inkscape here. I'll leave this up, uh, that way I uh, just give you sort of the really briefest, worst tutorial of this program. I'm sure if you typed in Inkscape tutorial into YouTube, you'd learn, like watching like the second or third video in any reasonable playlist, you'd be able to use it better than I can. <sighs> but I'll confess, I'm a father of three kids. In all honesty, my time is very valuable. It sounds a bit twitty of me. It even sounds a bit bratty or whiny. But in all honesty, I just want to be able to make the thing I need to make. And other than that, I really can't be bothered. So there you go. You can drag, you know, drag and select and group and then... I bring it to a general place, and then I realize I'm kind of snapping. Um, I may turn off snap, and if I, I'll try to remember to tell you with that if I do. But um, other than that, I just type in things manually, and it moves nicely enough for me. I may or may not get three rows of guys into this. I don't know. Probably not. Looks like not. Maybe. Maybe not. Um, either way, we're about like a minute until this uh, section ends. But what I just moused over briefly, those things that look sort of like messed up sergeant chevrons at the very top of this fret plan here are actually uh, what I'm going to be using to make stairs. Another spoiler alert, I actually end up dropping a bunch of those, but they print well enough to work, and I use them. So that's good. Um, yeah, I'm just going to say it right here, and I'm sure I'll say it again later, but that... Um, that uh, DIY etchant of hydrogen peroxide, two parts, and muriatic acid, one part, it works, and it works really, really awesome. All right, so before I uh, 
risk eliminating my capacity to photo etch anything more without a uh, bit of a resupply to make sure I'm not you know making this to the wrong size I'm gonna go ahead and actually kind of do a sort of dummy cutting out of uh, the photo etch printout this is actually from that Inkscape program I didn't think it could print this good so yay I suppose please don't mess with this thing yay it's still running okay goody goody so I'm gonna as I said Print out, I printed out just a test print to see if I can get it to the correct resolution. Apparently I can. So now I'm going to see just what I can get away with using just paper. To kind of, you know, test fit this thing a bit. Hopefully this is aimed at the thing. If not, well, that's why it's in time lapse. So here I just cut out, I uh, follow that paper cutout I've done. Um, just cut it out with a razor blade and then I go ahead and I fold it up and this next little bit is going to be whether it fits or not. That's not looking like it's going to be too bad actually. The worst comes to worst, I should still be able to flush the things just that little bit. Kind of, you know, make it fit as it were. But, actually isn't as bad as I thought it could be. So... Alright, and is this going to... Oh, that would look pretty nice, actually. It would pretty good. Alright. So that looks like it's... And is it the right height? Reasonably, reasonably close. I might want to, you know, do a little bit of trimming. But, you know, that's okay. That, that I can work with. That I can work around. That I can definitely work around. Mm-hmm. If I need to, I can always snip things, what have you. So that actually looks pretty good. Looks like I've got my uh, looks like I've got my paper doll test passed. And again, I've got other things. So hoping this time that my printing out and everything will not be in vain. All right, and can I get this into the old tripod camera mount slash failed urethane cast? Yes, I can. Okay. So, and, all right, so I've pretty well done it, and oh boy, have I done it quite well, and as you see, I've cut out a few bits, so these are my little staircase things, unfortunately, they keep, seem to keep falling from my hands, except for this one, which is, well, it's workable, but it's not as good as I'd like it to be. Like if I had to use it, I guess I could, but I'd really rather get a better one done. Well, the idea, but what I was thinking, is I could get this guy up here, cut, that's the first thing, cut this one out. All right. And after cutting that little piece out, I moved the camera and I started trying to cut out the little individual stairs. So I might have made reference to a uh, messed up kind of sergeant sign, you know, the one with the, uh, some people call it a chevron, but it's three of them pointed down. Well, this thing's more like four straight bars off of a V kind of thing. Maybe you saw in the past uh, thing I did. So what I'm doing is I'm folding them up and I'm using those to actually create the stairs and in a couple of seconds, you're actually going to see that that turns out, be honest, halfway good. You know, this works. Can I get that zoomed in? And I'm going to need a white background there. Come on. No, come on. There. That right there. That is a reasonable facsimile, in my opinion, of a staircase. Now, where is that thing that I was going to put it into? I can't really make up a tune, but I can put this in here. Now you know why I had this bottom piece like that, so I could actually, you know, slip it in like that. Yes. 
This is what I wanted. This is what I was looking for. An excuse to cover up the part in time last where I end up getting super glue in my mouth. Anyways, besides that silliness, so after working for a brief moment to get that out of my mouth, you just saw me put that in the little uh, tool there, and there I go using a drop of super glue to fix the stairs in place. That is really good. I mean, all things considered. First etch of the actual thing. Um, yeah, had to really fold this thing up something fierce. Didn't even etch fully properly, and yet I have a viable thing. That feels good. That is actually really good. And now, just to very carefully, if I can, can I pull that off rather? Alright, well, maybe not pull it. Yes, I can. Got it. Got it. Got it. Not quite, but we'll have it soon enough. Mm. Went, you know what? All things considered, this works, and again, I gotta keep reminding myself that this is the interior. I'm building this entirely from scratch. I've never done this before. <laughs> and it's a practice run anyway. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. I'm going to screen cap this and put it on my Facebook or something. Note the dime. Or something. Alright. Alright. And so there I am besides uh, the dime that I took the picture with. So you'll see the next uh, level in this set of decks, and I'm just cutting out a little piece there, which is about where that staircase would go. And after confirming that, uh, yes, the staircase is going to line up just right. Sell the illusion, as smart people would call it. Uh, I kind of refine that a little bit more. And here's a bunch of times where I start trying to uh, get that... Um, Get the wider section of that bar bet and sell that illusion, I guess. Uh, trying to wrap around this uh, piece of plastic to a, a set circumference or diameter. Uh, all the while, um, yeah, dealing with the fact that I don't really have a dedicated proper mandrel to work that with. I do end up finding one kind of by accident. One of those little coinky things, I guess, that some people would say is proof that God exists. Whether you believe it or not is not really my concern. Sometimes I wonder, sometimes I'd say no, but either way, here I am trying to mess with that thing and wrapping a second piece around, hoping that the additional structure of that layer of um, plastic will actually give me the round shape that I need. And uh, here I am kind of measuring things out again, trying to see how round is this, where do things go. This is the good thing about having a book and having it tell you what scale it uh, has its plans at, because then you can take your measurements and uh, work from there. So I changed a little bit the uh, scale factor I was using and uh, how precise I was being with this uh, set of, of uh, calipers and draw my lines and everything. Because what I found was that it was a 0.54875 or something versus 0.55 isn't all that different. I mean, 0.55 is obviously easier to calculate with. So I think that's how that works. And there I am, I'm tracing various pieces of the plan again and drawing them on this, uh, again, next deck, trying to say... How long are my funnel pieces? How long are the other rooms? Etc. Etc. And this time I'm using the uh, mechanical pencil to kind of trace things around in the hopes that I'll get a good straight line that can kind of guide me into where I want to put my plastic, where I want to measure its lengths from, so on and so forth. Again, it's not like I'm trying to build the actual ship, but since I have a kind of good point with the plans, I can get fairly close. 
guess there I'm just looking at where does this or that bulkhead go, kind of measuring again of uh, how accurate have I gotten it so far, that kind of thing. And all this fun stuff using the book to say, yes, I'm accurate, or no, I am a mile off. And there I am, just kind of taking some measurements based on um, that 0.55 factor I just mentioned, as well as the um, where various rooms are. So I'll go ahead and let you keep watching this of me laying a thing out, because being honest, I found that with everything you do, it really is like 1% the actual work, and 90, or maybe 98%, no, we'll just say 90% uh, actual prep work, so preparing to do the work, 1% doing the actual work, and then there's that last 9%, which is a roll of the dice. Um, so as you've seen, I've uh, taken the calipers, measured things out, then reset the calipers to what my scale factor is, which again, I'm is very closely approximated by 0.55, and then using the calipers to... Um, draw things out by the way another thing a guy told me at work one of the older guys that's been around a time or two um so here's why calipers have sharp edges so there's a layout fluid you can pour on stuff if you're laying things out on metal and whatnot i know i'm laying them out on plastic i guess the size those are sharp points you can trace along if you've got like a square or something and you can use that resulting line in the layout fluid to get very accurate cuts. Better for, you know, kind of, I guess, I guess putting, you know, center drills for holes and what have you. I've used it once or twice, and it worked well enough to make a prototype, but I'm not a machinist. And as you can see, here I am. I've, machine, I've um, <laughs> laid out some things, and I'm getting just about ready. Uh, to go ahead and um, I think you'll, you'll see in a few moments of me actually cutting some plastic up and yet here I am still messing around with this book what is it I said about 90% uh, prep so in a, just a moment we're going to see me close the book and there we go uh, and here I am laying a bunch of pieces of plastic now this clear thing you just saw me put down there that's about the size of that dime uh, you'll see that I'm actually using it as a kind of mandrel for some of the sections of plastic just to get that circular cross section as accurate as I can. So that's the uh, kind of coincidence that uh, some people would say, hey, there's your proof that God exists. Again, I'm not going to call that proof. I'm not going to deny the proof either because either side of that is controversial to some people. And this is YouTube. But uh, as you can see here, I am folding this and pushing this uh, piece of plastic until it's just about the right size. Again, using that clear piece of tubing as a mandrel. Now, I could have 3D printed some kind of adjustable mandrel, and I may do that in the future, even though it'd be a pain in the rear end. But um, in the meantime, I've got this nice, ready-made mandrel. And I'm going to take advantage of it to make this nice, perfect circle, as you see right there. And here I am now adding more pieces of wall to the various uh, sections of this uh, flat piece that I've traced all my wall sections to in order to as good as possible approximate this uh, deck. And yep, there I am cutting out various sections because this is where the uh, funnel starts going through. Um, just a little word in the funnel. So in the previous section of the decks I did, I had all the walls straight up. But in reality, the funnels kind of, some of them tilted into each other and became one. So that's a kind of a different story. I may or may not be able to replicate that with this section of walls. We'll see. If I was smart enough not to put in the wall sections prematurely, then I could try, I guess. If not, well... Again, it's a model, and it's a testing run, so I've got a bit more artistic license than I would in the Bismarck. So here I am, taking more measurements, making sure things line up, so on and so forth. Doing a couple of check runs on the uh, staircase to see, yes, it does line up. And then putting plastic in various bits so I can um, 
def I can uh, better outline uh, where the um, kind of intakes would be. Because not only did these boilers apparently have their big exhaust funnel, they also had some intake bits that would suck air in from above the ship. Because, yeah, let's face it, if you just had this like funnel and no intake, I could see that causing problems in all all seriousness. Anyways, there I am, moving bits of uh, plastic in to be where walls would be, pinching things together to make sure they'll form reasonably good-looking sections. Um, all right. I think that's me hemming and hawing at this point of where to put my next sections of wall, using the uh, orange snips to get the wall length just right, because... There is a point to where you're being precise enough and then where you're being over precise. Um, also, speaking of that, uh, considering a tool I just got recently, um, the one with the hypodermic needle and the capillary action to suck up the uh, glue, this brush works almost as well, being completely honest. All right, once more with feeling. So... A quick recap of this video is I have built all but the uh, full top deck of this interior section and I have photo etched. And this photo etch is very nice compared to my previous uh, results. Oh, it actually focused. Sweet. So as you can see, I have a lot more usable people in this one and I could cajole probably most if not all of them to be useful. I've had higher attrition on my, you know, chairs and desks and on other things. But overall, that is a lot more useful. In the last things, it looks kind of like sergeant stripes or stairs. Um, but I did it. I lined up a... I lined it up. I got it so that you actually can see a set of stairs going from a lower deck to a higher deck in this uh, set of pieces. Right there, like right there. That that one right there, if you can see it. So that, I'm going to be repeating a lot more for this one. Because there's a lot more stairs going up from that, you know, that level to this next one that I have. Another thing you'll notice is that this is actually a lot lower than the previous levels uh, stacked up to. And that's important because I want this to have all the deck pieces in there and still have the deck itself this guy being able to go over it that'd be that's an important thing from where I'm standing see if it you know does it nicely or not but again that's neither here nor there but overall I think this is going pretty good I think this is shaping up to look like a nice boat still gotta figure out how I'm gonna have the rigging and leave the decks able to be attached and detached. I might have to play some games with magnets or something. That might be how I do it. Either way. Either way. That's neither here nor there. So I'm going to go ahead now and take this... Um, I'm going to go ahead take the uh, footage from the past like two weeks, mash it up together, and uh, hopefully have some entertainment for you in a little bit. Uh, but... Please tell me how these go, if you like them, if you don't like them, ideas, suggestions, comments, crises, cheap shots, that's what the comments are for. And, uh, I, I guess I'll do the YouTube dance. Like, share, subscribe, hooray! I hope that that amused you, because that just, uh, is there, oh god, please. Oh, damn it, all the alcohol evaporated from it. Alright, till next time. Peace out.